Okay, so in the previous examples, there was a very clear alternative. There was uh, pregnant and not pregnant, right? Um, but usually, um, the alternative is true under a whole range of, of values. For example, if you're trying to uh, test a drug, let's say a vaccine, um, it could reduce the incidence of um, the disease by 1%, 2%, 3%, or, you know, cure every, prevent it from everyone from getting the disease. So there's a whole range. So what you have to do in order to figure out the, the probability of a type 1 error when the null is true, we set that. That's what we've, we've been doing. This is the decision maker right here. And we can figure that. We can choose that, the probability of a type 1 error. We've been choosing it as 5%. But to figure out the probability of the type 2 error, we have to choose a particular alternative. And so, um, in this case, let's, let's revisit uh, the, the problem that we, where we introduced the one sample Z test, where Carly and her uh, husband uh, think that they have some kind of special powers between them, between each other. We rejected, we didn't reject the null, right? Yeah, so if you guys watched that pre-lecture, it was the one talking about the one sample Z test, and my husband and I did this test where he was in another room um, holding up two markers, and I had to guess which one he was holding up, and him and I can read each other's minds. We're madly in love. So I thought for sure the Z test would show that, but instead our p-value was bigger than 5%, so we did not reject the null that I was just guessing. So our conclusion was that I was just guessing. So we want to look back at that example. I was not happy with that outcome. I'm still not happy with it. So I want to know, I'm questioning, did we make a type 2 error? Did we um, not reject an all hypothesis that was actually false? In other words, she thinks she has special powers, and we didn't have, she has a special ESP with her husband, and we just didn't have um, a high enough power test to detect that. So now, what we're thinking uh, is, first let's just, uh, so what do you think? I know you, you and Steve can't read each other's minds 100% of the time. True. So you have to pick a particular alternative. So pick the one that's like, one that, like 50, you know, 50% is just what you get by guessing. Just by guessing, exactly. So you have to pick one that's uh, important enough to you. The smallest one that's important enough to you, because you want to, you don't want to guess something. You don't want to have a particular alternative like ninety percent, because you know it's that's unattainable. That. Yeah, exactly. So I'd say if I have to pick, if I have to pick something bigger than fifty, let's let's just go with sixty. Sixty percent. Okay, so let's write that down then. So the null is that it's just fifty percent. Mm -hmm. So that's so we put that. So when the null is true, we have this blue curve. Um, we put that right at z equals zero. So that would be right here. We're going to call that right here the hypothesized value of the null right here when it's true. So this will just will refer to that as h naught. Yes. That's the hypothesized value when the null is true. Now, what particular alternative are you going to? And I, I chose 60%, so we need to figure out where is 60%, where do we mark Where is 60%? Well, I hope it's beyond this side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Let's see, it wasn't. Now, first of all, we have to decide how many questions. You only have 16 questions. That I wasn't said. enough. Maybe that wasn't enough. I think we should do 100. 100? 100. Oh, my goodness. Let's just figure out. Do you really? Let's see. Before you even begin this, we better see. Uh, what the probability if you actually have it, 60%, that it's going to get rejected. Yes. That it's going to decide the wrong way. Yes. I type two error, because that's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to set n equals 100. Let's write this down. Okay. n equals 100. Okay. So we want to know where to place 60% on there. So when n equals 100, right here, we can do a box model for here, and we want to figure out how, what percent is one standard error here? Yeah, which so. we, yeah, we've done that before, calculating the standard error when the null is true. So the null is that I'm just guessing. Steve and I don't have ESP, so if that's the case, I just have a 50% chance of getting it right every single time. So we've seen this box before. So what's that? 
So we know it's going to be distributed as a normal curve mm -hmm. because with 100 draws, this is certainly going data. to be normal by the central limit theorem. So we just want to know what percent um, was the standard error for percent. So we can do that. So the standard error for the percent when the null is true is just equal to SD. SD in the box, which looking at that, I know right away it's 0.5. I have half ones, half zeros. Oh, that makes it so easy. Yes. <laughs> so then it's 0.5 divided by the square root of 100 divided by 10 times 100%. Yep. So that's 5%. Exactly. So now that we know the standard error is 5, I know that one standard error would represent 55% correct answers. Um, so if I want to go, I said I picked 60, that works out nicely. It's right at a z-score of 2. And it is beyond our cutoff. But it wait a sec. What is the standard error? We have a different box now, Carly, so we might not have the same You're standard right. error. So let's check that out because now we know that it's centered at 60, but we might, it might not have true. the same standard error. So what would be the standard error? What would the box look like now? So you're saying that still there's a lot of luck involved in randomness, but that 60% of the time, it's like a coin that's weighted 60% of the time towards heads. Yes. So it looks like that. So then we do the same thing, and instead of 0.5 here, I think we get something very similar. It's very similar. It's the square root of 0.6 times 0.4 over the square root of 100 times 100, and I think it's almost, this is so close. It's about 0.5. So this is 5% too. Yes. With it, it's close enough. That's nice. So we have the same distribution here, so we can use these same errors. If we didn't, we just make, we just have to use a slightly different shape curve here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're good. And so now what are we going to do? So here, right here, is the hypothesized value of your alternative. You think you can get at least 60% or more. Yes. So, and we want to see, we want to figure know? out the power, right? Yeah, but what do we know here? We know this is the type 1 error is 5%. Yes. Because we set that. So if we want to set it at 5%, what must this be? So what is the critical value of C for 5%? That means 90 in the middle. 90 in the middle. And if we look up 90 on our normal table, we get 1.65. That's our critical value. 5% on the right tail, 5% on the left tail gives us 90 in the middle. So this right here is 1.65 right there. Okay. So now what we want to do is how are we going to, so we got that, and what we call this right here is Z for alpha, but we want to figure out this right here. Mm -hmm. So we want to figure out this one. This is this is the middle of the curve. We want to figure out this distance right here as a z-score. So what we have right here is we have this distance right here of 10% as a value. But what do we have as z-scores? Maybe it's easier if I write it up here. So I'm just going to erase this. We've already done this calculation. And what we, what we have here is here's the middle, 50% right here on this curve. And on this curve, the middle is 60% right there. And so we want to figure out from here, this is 1.65. And that's z alpha, but now we want to find out what this distance is, because we want to find out this whole distance as a z-score. And then once we get it as a z-score, we could take the middle area and get get this tail. This is what this is the, this is what this is what we're trying to figure out: the type two, two error, the probability of getting a type two error, because we talked about in the last video. If we're trying to calculate power, power is just 1 minus beta, 1 minus the probability of getting a type 2 error. We want to know this power here. Yes. The likelihood that if she, really, if she and Steve really uh, have a 60% type relationship here, that this test, as she goes through all this, is going, going, to, going detect to detect it. it. This is the probability it will detect it. This is the probability it won't. Looks like a big probability it won't, but how can we get that, Carly? 
Yeah. So what we need to do is get this z-score. This distance, once we do, we got the middle area, we can get that. So we want to get this z-beta. Yeah. And we know the whole thing is 2. Right, so we could just take 2 minus this, the 1.65, which gives so us. This right here, z beta has to be what? The whole thing is 2. It goes from 0 to 2. Mm -hmm. So 0.35, right? Yeah, so this distance, it's negative 0.35 is a z score, but right here, z beta is equal to, right here, is 0 0.35. Because the whole thing, this whole thing is 2. All right, so we've got that. So now, how do we get z beta? What do we know? Well, we know right here, let's just go back to our usual how you translate anything to a z-score. Okay? And let's see what we know. So we say this distance right here, mm -hmm. 60 minus 50 of 10%, is the, the effect size that we want. So we'll write that down. We want to change the effect size We want to change that into a z-score. Because once we got the z-score, we figured it out in our head. Mm -hmm. But what if it wasn't so easy? This whole distance of 2, it just worked out nicely. But what if it wasn't? So we want the effect size as a value. We'll just call it right here. We want to, this distance, 60 minus 50, the alternative minus that. The absolute value, we're just talking about distances, we want to change that somehow into a z score, into a distance of z. So we'll call it a z distance. Okay? Now, how do we do that? Usually we say this value over the standard error mm -hmm. is equal to a z. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. This is the conversion factor between values and z scores. So, what's our standard error? Well, we got 5%. That's our standard error for both of them. So, we can use that. So, this distance right here of 10 over 5 is equal to a z-score of 2. And that's what we saw intuitively. Mm -hmm. But lots of times, it won't, it won't match up. So, now we've got the z-score of So, now we have the distance of 2. So. We know z alpha because we set that. Z alpha was set by us. And z alpha plus z beta has to equal z distance, which in this case is 2. So we have 1.65 plus 1. And that's 0 0.35. Mm -hmm. Once we know that, these are absolute values because they're all distances. OK. So once we know that, once we so once we know that, we can figure out, then this is just like, it's like, like, like the, the normal curve problems that we've been doing. We know that we can look up 0.35 and that will give us the middle area. Okay, let's do that. I've got a table here. Positive and, and negative. 0 0.35 is 27. About. All right, so that's 27%. And our power, we said, is 1 minus beta. So let's find beta first and then just take 1 minus that to get the power. So to find this tail, to find beta, that is just a tail. We can just take 100 minus our middle area of 27 and divide by 2. So what do I get, Ellen? 73 divided by 2. So that's 36 and a half. That sounds good. So beta is 36 and a half. This right here, shaded in black, that's beta, that's 36 and a half. And our power, we so know. Our power, so this I'll put, so beta equals 36.55. So our power has to be 63.5, right? Yep, 100, I guess I could do it like this, 100 minus 36.5 gives me exactly that, 63.5. Wow, that's curly. You're going to go through all this, and if even if it's true, that's a you don't want that much. Do you? I mean, that you want probability that of a type two error is huge. So what right, can, what can we do to reduce it? You can make these standard errors smaller, so the curves are narrow, closer together. Mm -hmm. Not closer together; they're narrower. I could make my I could make my cutoff 
more this way, right? Well, you could make it, but then if you do that, if you make your cutoff here, that says, oh my goodness, that anybody could. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then it says anybody could, anybody who gets probably just a few more right than 50%. Yeah. You'll have a huge that. amount of false oh. positives. So you can't do that, but what we can do is change this standard error. Where is this? You divide by 100. Mm -hmm. If we divided it by like 400, or made it, that would make this only 2.5. And if this was 2.5, we have, instead we'd have 52.5 is 1, 55, 57.5, 60. These curves would be separate. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should try that. So let's, that's, uh, this is actually, a much more common thing, use of power, is, or these calculations, is to decide what sample size you need in order to get, achieve a certain uh, power. So that's what we'll do next.